Hello once again. This is Pastor Kevin Hart of the Little Providence Baptist Church here in the Catahoula com community of Kill, Mississippi. We are so grateful that you have joined us once again for our broadcast. We thank you for your support and your prayers and your comments about our previous broadcast. We are praying that God will continue to bless us in these times as we try uh, to get our message out to our members and not only our members, those of you who are joining family and friends, we pray that you have been blessed by what we have been able to do so far through the help of God. Today, we are so glad that you have joined us as we continue and do the final chapter in our book, uh, Journey into Stress-Free Living, a study of the book of Philippians by Tommy C. Higgle. Last week, we covered... Uh, couple of points in this week. We hope to finish that. As we go forward, we just thank God and ask you to continue to pray for us. We shall continue to pray for you. And remember that through it all, God is still in charge. Thank you. Greetings once again, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We greet you in the name of God the Father, our sovereign God, His Son Jesus, our Redeemer and Savior, and the Holy Ghost, our Keeper and our Guide. We thank God for your presence as we uh, finish our Bible study from last week, the 13th chapter of the book, Journey into Stress-Free Living by Tommy C. Higgle. And we just thank God. We pray that you will be blessed in the word tonight. We will be coming from the fourth chapter of Philippians. Before we begin, let us, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, how we thank you for this opportunity God, in spite of everything that may be going on, God, you are creating new levels of ministry, not just for this church, but all of your churches, oh God. So God, we're praying for your covering. We're praying for your, your grace, praying for your mercy. For every church door that's open in your name, every pastor, every preacher, evangelist, teacher, oh God, who is striving to put the word out in these trying times. God, we pray that you will cover us with the blood of Jesus as we journey through our storms. I ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. God, all that we do, not for any self-glorification, uh, but that you may get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Last week, we were in the 13th chapter of uh, our journey book and the title of the chapter was enjoying the rest of your life a couple of points real quick that we studied last week said in order to enjoy the rest of your life says the first thing we need to do is learn how to be content we find ourselves in this world that uh, sometimes we just aren't satisfied with things being as well as they are but God is still God. Uh, and we also talked about in learning to be content, one of the first things we've got to do is stop comparing ourselves to somebody else. My blessing is not your blessing. Your blessing is not my blessing. But we will get in a state of uh, discontent when we are always looking over the fence at our neighbor to see what they have and if we don't have it, it makes us feel like we're left out. So we have to stop comparing ourselves to everybody else. Then the second thing we talked about was stop being obsessed about having more. Just because the latest and the greatest have come out on the shelf, it doesn't mean that we absolutely need to have it. The newest TV, the newest clothes, the newest car, we have got to stop being obsessed with having more and understand that we have to learn to thank God for what we do have as opposed to what we don't have. Third thing we talked about, which is a big uh, topic in today's time, is that we have to learn to accept change. If we cannot accept change, our lives will be filled with stress because life is an ever-changing evolution. Then we, the last point we talked on last week was learning how to lean on God's power. We closed out with that 13th verse of the uh, fourth chapter of Philippians. 
that says I can do not some things, but I can do all things, not in myself, but through the power of God. And so today we're going to pick up on the third point of how to enjoy the rest of your life, how to have a stress-free life. Uh, and the third point, we're going to start at Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 18. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 18. In it, Paul says, Nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. Now you, Philippians, know also that in the beginning of, of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you did sent, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma and acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. The third point that the book wants to bring out about stress-free living is that in order to be stress-free, we've got to learn to live generously. In this letter, uh, these scriptures, Paul is thanking the Philippians for their financial support, which had been ongoing in the past. And he thanks them for sending it over and over again. That's verses 14 through 16. Paul wants the Philippians to know that they can expect dividends on their investment in his ministry. For he writes... Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Let me just stop here and say, we cannot beat God's giving. If you want a good investment program, invest in the ministry of God. For God is not short of his word. God is not a man that he should lie. If God promised it to us, God will give it to us. I know that in these times... A lot of churches are dispersed, but our members, we want to remind us, we still have duties to the ministry, for the ministry is still going on. But it's not that we desire to give, but to live generously to give so that the church itself may give. Uh, watch what Proverbs 11 and 25 says. It says, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. When life seems to be getting you down, when you need a refreshment, uh, you know what the best thing to do is? Stop worrying about yourself and give generously to somebody else. I am a living witness that I have uh, been in times where just being able to help somebody else uplifts my spirit. Now, I didn't do that in my own power. Remember, we've got to rely on the power of God. And see, Paul said, there's no good thing in me. So if the Spirit of God moves in you, it will allow you to live generously. When life, uh, watch what Luke 6.38 says. Now this is a promise. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Huh? Run it over. If there's anybody who's able to run over our cup, to fill our cup, it is God himself, Jesus Christ. Now, here's how I feel about the overflow. A lot of people talk about the overflow. But see, my philosophy is God does not bless us for us. God blesses us to bless us. And a lot of times the overflow, that stuff that's spilling over, that's what belongs or that's what we need to learn how to give generously. Paul refers to the gift given to him by the Philippians as an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice, a sacrifice. 
Listen at that word, a sacrifice given generously sometimes is a sacrifice. I know that in these times, a lot of us are holding on to what we have, not understanding what we might need, the uncertainty of what we might need. But here is a time to practice living generously, looking out for your neighbor, looking out for the next person, maybe not taking the four rolls of toilet paper, but giving two to somebody else. Believing that living generously has its rewards. A sacrifice. And when you really think about living generously as we approach Easter Sunday, what did Jesus give? What did Jesus give to us? He gave his very life so that we might have life. It says there are really two kinds of people in the world. There are takers and then there are givers. What is your classification? Are you a taker? Or are you a giver? Is life about what you get for yourself? Or is life about what you get and sharing it with others? See, there's nothing wrong with asking for more. But the question is, why do you want more? Is it for yourself? Or is it for somebody else? It says, the only ones who really enjoy life are the givers. If you want to go through the rest of your life stressed out, depressed, continue to be selfish and stingy. But if you want a life that is full, that is fulfilled with fulfillment, try being a generous giver. Give of your time, give of your talent, give of your treasure, give of your gift, give of your love, and give it, says God love what? A cheerful giver. Give it generously. And then final point that we're going to bring out in this is to let God meet your needs. So many times we get in trouble. So many times we get ourselves in a fix because we try to fix our own problems. Yes, I'm, I, I, I'm like anybody else. I've had financial trouble. But a lot of times, sometimes alone, trying to fix that, I would get in more financial trouble trying to do it on my own. But this fourth verse, this fourth point says, let God be the one who meets your needs. That's in the ninth, uh, fourth chapter, the 19th verse. Watch what Paul says. And my God shall supply not some of your needs, not partial of your needs, not 75% of your needs, but said that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. When we live, learn to live generously, God does not forget about us. Some people say, some people call it planting seeds. Now being the country boy that I am, I've planted many things over my life. And not one time have I ever planted one seed of corn, one kernel of corn, and got one kernel back. And it was nothing that I did to cause it to multiply. But my God will supply all of your needs. It says, like all promises in the Bible, this promise has a premise. The premise is, we can only claim the promise if we're generous like Paul describes in our previous verse. If we meet the premise, then we can count on the promise. Let me say that again. If we meet the premise, then we can count on the promise. Well, what is the premise? The premise is that we give. We give. Let's go back to see what Luke says. It says give, and is what? Shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. 
shake it together and run it over. Watch what 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says. It says, he that sows sparingly shall do what? Reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall sow, shall reap bountifully. I'm reminded of a story of a cousin of mine who used to plant his field. And if he planted five pounds of corn, he felt like he should plant at least two more, three more pounds for the birds. And somehow, through God's divine providence, he had more, even though he put stuff out there for the birds, he actually ended up with more. So sparingly. What does that mean? When it's time to support ministry, are you one of the ones who take your wallet out and hide it to count how many one dollar bills you're putting? Or you just give generously, knowing not for shape, form, or fashion, not so that people can see you, but because you have an earnest desire to support the ministry of God, understanding that churches are supporting its it's the members and those outside of the church. But if we so spare, this says that we shall reap bountifully. And as God supplies our needs, what is his bank account? The book says, he shall supply all of your need, all of our needs, according to, according to his riches in glory. How rich is God? Somebody said. Said the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. Said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. I've always been under the mindset that. If Bill Gates was my father, why should I worry about computers? Because my father has what I need. And on the same principle spiritually, if God owns everything, and I am his child, because I've been washed in the blood of Jesus, why should I worry about anything? But I've got to learn to be generous in those things that I do. And John said, according to his riches and glory, God wants to give us everything. And one of the main things God wants to give us is Jesus Christ. Your journey into stress-free living first comes by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Accept the work of Jesus Christ to die in our stead, to become that sacrifice, holy sacrifice, Lamb of God, unblemished, took on the sins of the world so that we might live and not just live. According to John 10 and 10, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life. And not just life, but life more abundantly. And you know something that I find out a lot of times. Well, let me back up. Because he said he's going to supply all of our needs. Not necessarily our wants. But God has a permissive will that he will just give us some of our wants. But he said, I will supply all of your needs. Believe me, as, God, as children of God, God knows what we need. He said, I know what you need even before you ask. But he said, ask, and it shall be done. Knock, and the door shall be open. Seek, and he shall find. God usually meets our needs 
through other believers. God counts on us to bless others and to support what it is that he wants us to do in ministry. Brothers and sisters, if we really want to live a stress-free life, one says learn to be content in whatever state I find myself in. Paul says, I have learned to be content. How do I find that contentment? I don't compare the blessings that God gives me versus what God gives somebody else. And whatever blessings I receive, I have learned to not only be content, but to thank God for what he has done. Many times we miss out on blessings, on bigger blessings, because we haven't learned to thank God for smaller blessings. Then the other thing I've learned in being content is I have stopped uh, being obsessed with having more. I've trained myself just because the newest, the greatest, the latest comes out. I don't have to have it. Then I've learned, I am learning to accept change since life is a series of change. Second, I have learned to lean on God's power. There's a song that says, learning to lean, learning to lean. I have learned how to lean on Jesus. And watch this. It is a process that we have to learn. And remember from our first video, in order to learn, we have to be tested to see if we have learned. Then, in order to have that stress-free life, it says we must learn to live generously. Our life isn't about us. It's about others. And then four. Through it all, no matter where you find yourself, let God supply your needs. Because he's a rich God. <clears throat> he's able to supply our needs according to his riches in glory. He's able. Is there? I, I don't know about anybody else, but I know that God is able. To supply my needs. How do I know? How do I know? Because I've been there. I've been there with my back against the wall. And my wall against the back. So. But I have learned in the process. Just to lean and depend on Jesus. We pray that you have enjoyed this series. As we move forward. Uh, in our video Bible study. We will be doing a review of the book and it will bring a lot of great points that we all can use during this time, especially when we have to learn how to live stress-free through Jesus Christ. God bless you and may God keep you.